Beauty and Brains presents a work in progress. Your favorite weekly podcast all about navigating adulthood and adversity with transparency and vulnerability. Here, we highlight progress over perfection. You're listening to my personal professional development diary, where I share the highs and lows and the real and raw parts of the story that no one talks about. I'm your host, Breland Hunt, a work in progress. Dear friend, I hope all is well with you, that you are as healthy in body as you are sound in mind and strong in spirit. Welcome back. (laughs) Welcome back to a work in progress. Is that the name of my podcast? (laughs) I don't know why saying that just sounded so odd right now. It's been a minute. Welcome back to a work in progress the podcast you guys yay i i really wanted to come back and be like okay now it's season two especially because as you can tell if you're watching here on youtube shout out to my youtube girlies but also shout out to just the audio listeners because if you're if you literally just found me just as a podcaster and you just like me as a podcaster i love you i appreciate you i respect you and um but if you guys don't know, if you're just listening to the podcast, you probably have no idea, even though I think I did talk about it. Not fully. The, okay. The point is that it's a new scenery. We're in a whole new location. We're in my new apartment uh, living here in DC. And we're going to talk about that because today's podcast episode is about my first semester in my pre-medical school program at the Harry Medical College, aka med school boot camp. We're going to talk about that in today's video um, just as a big life update. I feel like the first 10 or so episodes was all about the waiting season, me applying to medical school, how that felt. I My first episode was talking about me studying for the MCAT and so I would have really liked for the second season to be something similar but different kind of like part two to the story like every season was a new chapter and I feel like this was definitely a new chapter however I didn't really get the opportunity to podcast throughout it like the whole first semester has passed and this is our first podcast but it's just really really and I I never want to sound like I'm complaining but it is a lot more work to do a podcast than it is to vlog and being a one woman show to write your podcast episodes like script them out before get all the scenery and stuff set up edit it film it for out like it's a lot and I didn't even think about the fact that my apartment window is so loud and I hope you guys can't hear all of that madness while I'm filming but wow, we're really getting off topic early on in the podcast. I mean, obviously, I'm very rusty. I haven't filmed one, like I said, in a really long time. I was saying all this to say that obviously the podcast has been on a pause. I thought about coming back and saying that it was season two because it really is a new chapter and a new journey. But this chapter is also halfway over. I'm really just going to lump all this in into season one. And when we come back for season two, we will be discussing new things. We'll be out of this kind of like pre-med pocket or maybe something different. Anyway, let's get into my first semester in my pre-medical school program, talking about the fact that it was virtual, finding study groups, my schedule, classes, professors, mentors, GPA, MCAT, med school application, all the things you want to hear. We're going to be talking about it in today's episode. First thing I want to say, oh my gosh, is that I'm having so many full circle moments because at this current time that I'm filming this podcast, I am studying to take the MCAT again. If you haven't watched my video about the T of my post back program, that goes into detail about everything in regards to what I have to do in order to get that medical school acceptance at the end of this program. But I will say that although I'm not happy to have to retake the MCAT. I'm very much so happier at this point now here today than I was this time last year um, for so many different reasons. And I remember filming a podcast and talking about how like something's got to change. Something has to give like I will not be in the same situation. I won't be working at the same place. I declared that I would not be in the same position in the next year. And that is 110% true. I am so much better off, whether it be, you know, mentally, financially, I don't know if I would say physically, I kind of maybe, maybe, I'm probably the same, <laughs> but um, I'm just in a much better place. And it's because I set my intentions that 
I was going to do something different. And I'm really just proud to look back on myself. And even though, again, I'm not where I want to be, I am at a much better place than I was last year. And that's really what a work in progress is all about. Finding joy in the journey and being happy along the way. So this post back experience was prayed for, but it definitely was still unexpected because as we know, this time last year, I was waiting for medical school interviews and I, you know, was filling out secondary applications. I was working at the GYN office as a medical assistant and the acceptance to Meharry came in very last minute. Again, I talked about how I got accepted into another program. I was interviewing for one program in like March when I first quit my job. And then that program ended up falling through and I ended up interviewing for a second program, getting accepted, thinking that I was going to go there and then getting accepted into Meharry and then ended up choosing that program over them all. Then I found out that the program was virtual and I did find this out after accepting. I did not know that it was going to be virtual. I think I said this before, but I definitely thought that I was packing up my things and I was moving to Nashville. Like, I mean, I was looking at apartments. I was reaching out to potential roommates. And there are a lot of people who did move to Nashville, like it's an option, but we don't have any obligations to be in the city of Nashville or the state of Tennessee or on the campus of Meharry Medical College, the program is completely virtual. So again, if you guys don't know, I took that as an opportunity to live out one of my long dreams of living in DC. And I was like, okay, if we're going to be virtual, I'm going to move to DC. I'm going to live here. I'm going to do school virtual. I'm going to grind out this year. And then I'm going to get that medical school acceptance at the end of this program. I didn't even fully really know like what I was getting myself into. Again, I didn't really know what I was signing up for. I literally signed that Meharry contract with hopes and dreams that it was going to be what I needed. Like I definitely did my research, but I think that from afar, I just always loved the idea of what the Meharry program was. And I could find a lot of faults in the other programs. And this program has its faults just like all the programs do, but I think that's why I understand when you guys reach out to me via Instagram DMs or on YouTube and you're asking me all these specific questions because you're just like, if I had the opportunity to go to an HBCU medical school where the admissions team is in contact with this program and you have to take these classes and yeah, you know, you may have to retake the MCAT or get a certain GPA, but like you have a really great chance of getting into medical school. And a lot of people, especially black people, black students, black pre-medical students like myself, we need those connections. We need that help because it's very hard unless you are just an outstanding student, a very top tier uh, pre-medical biology, chemistry, whatever major health science major, in undergrad, it's very hard to get into these schools when you do have a low GPA, a low MCAT score, whatever the case may be. So for me, I really felt like this program was the best out there. And I was very particular about choosing a program that would be a good fit for me because I didn't need another degree. Um, I am earning a master's of health science in a couple of months, which is exciting, um, but that's not the goal. The goal is not to be a master of health science. The goal is to be student Dr. Breland. And we are on our way. We are becoming Dr. Breland one step at a time. So again, I do have a full video on the curriculum of the program, but just to spark notes, it's two semesters. 16 credit hours um, of pre-medical courses that are taught by Meharry Medical College faculty. And they also serve on the board of admissions, not all of them, but some of them. And they also teach the medical students. The semester is split by a dedicated admissions test studying period where students are expected to take or retake the MCAT or the DAT and get a certain score. This program is open to both pre-dental and pre-medical students since Meharry has both a medical school and a dental school. It also has a graduate school, obviously, which we're at. Um, there is a GPA requirement and there is a MCAT or a DAT requirement. And those two together will allow you to get an interview interview and then you will most likely get accepted. So a lot of times I literally just say it's pre-medical school because we are literally learning the same information that the M1s or the D1s do. We're being taught by the same professors. It's a very accelerated program. I would say it's very different than my last um, post back or master's program, it feels much more like medical school, even just the way that the the semester, why are they honking so much outside right now? Like out of all days, at all times, why, why here, why now? Um, anyway, sounds of the city. We asked for this, right? We moved to DC for this, but 
yeah, so, oh no, I lost my train of thought. What was I saying? A lot of people ask me like, is this a guaranteed acceptance? Nothing is guaranteed. There are no post back programs that guarantee you admission. It's a contract, you have to do something. All the other programs require for you to do something in order for them to accept you. None of them will say that it is a guarantee. Even if you do like a BSMD program, you will maybe still have to have a certain GPA before getting accepted or have a certain GPA, maybe not take the MCAT, but you know, do well in the interview. So it's the same thing for this program. They will not say that it is guaranteed because you sign a contract. The goal is to stick to everything the contract says and therefore be accepted. It's very possible. Obviously there are hundreds of students for many generations now who have done this program and gotten into the program and are now practicing physicians, dentists, et cetera, because of this program. So it's a real thing. But I would just say that when people ask me, is it a direct link? Like it is the medical school admissions team is literally meeting with us MHS students to tell us what we have to do to get into the program. But if you don't get the GPA, you don't get the MCAT score, then they can't just give you the acceptance. Now, it's a bit of a leniency and a curve, which again, is another reason why it, it really is a shortcut for me. Because again, a lot of people ask, and I talk about this in a previous vlog, why do this program over just studying for the MCAT yourself, which I could do. But it really hits three key things that I feel like I wouldn't be able to do on my own. Timing wise, there's no way I would have been able to take this many graduate level courses and still find time to study for the MCAT and still apply in this medical school application cycle with an admissions team specifically looking for my for my application and pulling it out of a pile in order to make sure that I get into the medical school class. There's nothing that I could have done to get that type of special treatment except for be in a program like this. Okay, <laughs> I feel like that was a lot, but hopefully you guys get a good understanding of just the world of post bags and just with anything, I say that you should do your research if you're interested in this program or other ones. One reason why I did like and choose this program is because the contract was very clear. It didn't seem like it was something that was unattainable. Other programs, you had to get a certain grade on every single exam. As a person with test anxiety, I did not want that pressure, even though it felt like, okay, maybe you don't have to retake the MCAT, if you have to take a test every single week, there were plenty of, not plenty, but there were a couple exams that I did not pass in the Meharry program. But at this point, I do have the GPA because it's more than just the test scores. It's a variety of different things together. And I knew that it would be a good choice for me to make because I would be able to have other factors in order to lean on, in order to remain true to the contract, at least as of right now. I am speaking in the middle of this. Again, this was just my first semester. So we will come back to this when I'm, you know, accepted into a program or after the second semester. But for now, I do feel like I made a good choice in order to get me on that fast track into being a part of the medical school class of 2027, I think it is. I stopped counting the years because sometimes it, it makes me overwhelmed. Um, so moving on, my vision of completing another post back was really romanticized by one really big encouraging factor for me that I could move out of my mama's house. Like I said, this time last year, I was like, I've got to go. I can't be working here anymore. I can't be living in my mama's house. I I just did not enjoy it. It made me very unhappy. So not having a new city to move to, like I definitely could have stayed at home with my mom for another year while completing this program. It would have been very difficult and I much would have preferred to be on a school campus just for me to have a home base. So being in this program, half of that goal was accomplished by me moving to DC. I have my own space and I love my apartment. I was able to stay very focused being virtual, but I am very lonely here in DC because I don't actually have a lot of community here because everybody in my program is either spread out across the country and mostly in the Southern states or they are in Nashville, Tennessee. I know that I could do more, but the reality is that this program is very accelerated and I just don't want to make the same mistakes that I previously have enjoying life more than kind of grinding for my goal. So again, I stay in my apartment 98%, maybe 90. And more than that, like 95% of the time. You guys watch my vlogs, you know, I literally just bounce around from each room. 
I go to church, I go grocery shopping, you know, a little TJ Maxx, a little, you know, Target, and then I'm back. <laughs> and I, I bounce around between different places in my in my study places. I knew that I was going to be doing this when I chose this apartment, which is why I chose one that has a study hall, one that has a pool, one that has a nice gym, and I utilize all my amenities as I stay here six days out of the week. <laughs> But like I said, for right now, I'm okay with that because I know that it's temporary and it's for a purpose and it's only for a season and it's not a bad jail cell to be in, you know, if I do say so myself. So I still have a few more months here and I do plan to make my time here worthwhile with a new 2023 goal that I have. Um, so we'll see. Stay tuned. All right, so moving more into the academics part of this educational conversation. This semester, I took four classes, biochemistry, physiology, microbiology, and cell and molecular biology. I'm not gonna lie, they were hard. <laughs> they were hard. Each one of them had their moments. Um, managing four science classes was pretty difficult. I've, I don't think I've ever had to do that before. Like maybe an undergrad, maybe I took four. I think literally the time I tried to study for the MCAT my junior year and I was taking like orgo and physics and not a smart thing to do. If you're an undergrad, like don't do that if you don't have to. But I think just the way our semester was set up, you kind of had to. And the way that this was set up, you kind of had to. But I think it, it will definitely prepare me for medical school. Like I am studying all the time because there is no easy class. There is no easy a there is no i'm gonna focus on this that way like you have to be in it all the time and they do that on purpose especially with the way that they set up their quizzes and exam weeks again i talk about this in some of the vlogs but if you're unfamiliar they will have a week where you will take a quiz in every single class you have a quiz on monday wednesday and friday and then the next monday and that next monday quiz always sucks because you can't even relax during your weekend but there were some times where you would have um, a quiz like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then classes on Friday. Classes were normally from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m., lunch from 1 to 2, and then classes from 2 to 4. Sometimes we also had classes from 4 to 6. It just depended on our schedule. Um, also, these classes are in Central Time and I'm in Eastern Time, so they are pushed back an hour for me, which I enjoy because if I had to wake up at 8, it would make a big difference <laughs> in the way that I was able to like wake up in the morning time and go to the gym or you know whatever so overall like I said it was intense it was definitely accelerated but it was doable it was possible like I said I did get the GPA that I needed to get this semester which I'm very proud about but I mean I I grinded it out <laughs> I I worked hard for it I deserved it but it, it took a lot of work um virtual learning not as bad as it was during the pandemic. Um, there were some things, you know, I definitely wish, I'm such a people person. I wish that I could be in class with my classmates. I wish I could have met my professors in person. Um, but it is nice to kind of like on your worst days, wake up, roll out of bed and open up your computer screen and be there. Um, and I think just being dedicated, virtual learning just overall is lame. I don't really have that many bad things to say about it, but also not a lot of good things either. It's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, you know, virtual learning, not our favorite. But I will say that I was able to find like a great study group that genuinely looked out for each other and we could like really meet up and they sent resources and I really appreciated that. I had a couple different groups that I tried out and then there was one that really stuck. So even though I'm virtual, I still have friends. I just wish that they were friends in person. <laughs> and then also I will say that my classmates are amazing. Like the people in my cohort, the network, they are all just very encouraging and they're also all like Christ-based. I'm pretty sure everybody is not, but the school itself is Christ-based. Like it's part of our mission. So we have like chaplains are part of the e board and they will send literally devotionals before a quiz day and encouraging messages when we've had a really hard week and I really appreciate that sense of community during this program even though I feel alone <laughs> because it is virtual learning. Also my list here I wanted to talk about how there were a lot of different professors which ended up leading to there just being a lot of adjustments like I think for each I should have counted how many different professors we had in all four of our classes, but I would say around a good 20 professors, like not being dramatic, maybe 15, like mm, 15. 
yeah, 15 to 20, because if there's four classes, there were at least like five professors for each class. Now, sometimes one professor would teach for two classes. Sometimes they would teach for multiple blocks. But yeah, I, that was the first time I've ever had multiple professors teach one class. I'm actually not quite sure if that's how they do their medical school. I'd be very interested to know because it is difficult to switch your learning style and again, adjust with every different professor, even if it's the same class or similar content. It literally feels like you're taking a completely different class depending on who your professor is. So that's something I would look into for your future um, post back programs or medical school or dental school programs. Like what are your professors like? How many different professors do you have per class? Um, how many of them are visiting professors? How many of them are, you know, on the admissions board? Stuff like that. I definitely didn't even think about that before doing the program. And it ended up being a really big factor. Not one that I could change, not one that I would like not choose the program over but something that I wish somebody would have put me on to before starting the program. I will say a good benefit to having so many different professors is that if you don't mesh well with one person's teaching style or their energy or just their personality, it's going to change in a couple of weeks. <laughs> so so you can still do well in the class if you end up meshing with the next professor or the next professor. And a lot of them are very kind and they deeply cared for us as students and as people and as you know, future doctors, like they genuinely really wanted us to do well. I've never seen such caring professors who, again, who just genuinely wanted you to accomplish your dream of becoming a doctor. It wasn't about making a test super hard to see like who would fail or trying to weed us out. It was like, I want you all to win. I want to give you guys all the knowledge and the resources that I can to make sure that you are successful. I think that that is unfortunately very rare. <laughs> why but I have never just felt so intentionally supported by a staff of faculty before um, up until this program so that's a very big benefit um, so that's just that's just me singing Meharry's praises in that account because it really is an amazing and unfortunately unique thing and then lastly I will say that Meharry has a really great curriculum um, as I study for the MCAT things are finally starting to click. I'm seeing a lot of things that I would see a professor like really double down on during lecture. And then I would see it in our quiz or maybe our an exam and I'd be like, okay. And I'm like seeing it now on the MCAT and I'm like, this is exactly what they taught us. Maybe it's being taught differently, but like these are concepts. These are, you know, just little facts and things that are clearly important, whether the MCAT is really a depiction of medical school. So Meharry is there for preparing us for medical school or Meharry just knows what the MCAT is asking for. So they're preparing us for the MCAT, whichever it is. For the first time, I'm finally feeling like the information that I'm studying on the MCAT is something that I've previously learned before in class. Like when I first started studying for the MCAT, I was like, this is not the physics that I'm learning here at Spellman. Like the formulas, the I, physics is still so confusing to me because I'm literally a self-taught physics student because what the heck was Spellman teaching us? Even at NC State, like the physiology was so in depth that it was so hard for me to look at the physiology on the MCAT at such a bird's eye view. I've learned this year the phrase that the MCAT is a mile long but an inch deep and I feel like obviously if you get a master's in a specific topic you're going deep so I would be looking at literally the little details in a physiology passage for the MCAT when I only really need to know the surface level things and it actually kind of messed me up so even though I retook physiology this year I feel like I understand the information that is asked of me on the MCAT differently because I know more surface level things that have just like deep level things I hope that makes any sense again I wouldn't say I do everything perfectly by far but I do hope that I see the same thing for med school where okay yeah y'all taught us this in MHS and now I'm seeing it again and now that it's my second or my third time I'm really able to ace this information. I did hear that's how it is in medical school but I'm hoping that's specifically the case for me because you know everybody's experience is different. So speaking of MCAT let's get into that MCAT studying. Um, by the time you guys are watching this I'm probably a few days away from my test now if not my test has passed. Um, I'm recording 
recording this like a month beforehand, so I hope I'm still in good spirit. I am using Kaplan so far. I'm loving it. I love the database. I will say that it is very, very, very hard to study during the holiday season. I talked about this in a previous vlog, but between just getting really a week of a winter break and seasonal depression and wanting to rest after a long semester. My family and friends are in town. They want to meet. They want to hang out. They want to know how my semester was. They want to know how my LA trip was and they want to hang out. And I'm constantly having to say no and study through it all. And it takes a lot of discipline, a lot of motivation, and it's just really hard. It's honestly just really hard because I want to rest. And I found that when it comes to this time around with my MCAT anxiety, it's coming at like a fight or flight freeze type of thing and I'm freezing. I find myself kind of freezing when I get so overwhelmed and quote unquote wasting days. And again, I talked about this in the vlog, but I feel like a lot of my anxiety comes from the fact that I only have six weeks to study for the exam this time. Whereas last time I basically took six months. Um, I do see my score improving. Um, as of right now, it's not where it needs to be. I'm not like, oh, okay, every time I'm taking it, I'm getting my goal score. So I'm sure I'll be fine. I still have to hop a lot of points. So if I get a 503, I'm guaranteed an interview. Um, they literally told us that there really has never been an MHS student who has ever gotten an interview and not gotten into the school. Like you basically really have to mess up your interview to not get in at that point. Um, but there are, of course, people, if you don't get the MCAT score, or you don't get the GPA that you don't get in even if you do end up getting an interview so the goal is to get that 503 but again there is a little bit of leniency if I get like for example 502 or 501 I'll be placed on the waiting list and it's possible that I could get in but it wouldn't be through the MHS program it'll kind of be like I'll be on the waiting list with the the regulars <laughs> Sorry to call y'all regular, but you know what I'm saying? The regular people who are applying. Um, I could still get in that way though. And also another reason why I wanted to do the Meharry program is because I am I am, and I have applied to other programs as well. So hopefully the goal is to not just get accepted into Meharry, but into multiple programs and to have options of where I'm going. And whether I choose to continue my education at Meharry and move to Nashville or to another school, I hope that option is available to me. So with that being said, my AMCAS application is out. Um, I've submitted a couple of secondaries now. And again, I did apply to multiple medical schools as long as they take the January MCAT. That's like the big caveat. I'm not applying to like 20 plus schools. I literally applied to like five because only certain schools take the January MCAT, which is when I'm taking mine. But honestly, I figured that five was better than just one. So I'm shooting my shot and we will see where I land. Uh, worst case scenario, and I don't like to say this a lot because I don't like to think about this, but worst case scenario, if I do have to reapply, but my MCAT score did improve, which at this point, like it has to, my scores, my scores from my practice tests are already an improvement. So even if I have to reapply next cycle, I will have everything done because I can still apply with my January MCAT. Obviously, it'll be another gap year, which isn't ideal, but at least I won't be trying to get my application together, trying to get my letters of recommendations together, trying to study for the MCAT, trying to, you know, take other classes. I'll be like, okay, well, I have everything ready. If I have to do the fee admissions program again, not pay for anything, I just send stuff out, but then also get to apply to more schools. It won't be the worst thing in the world and I'll probably get more options and I'll finally be able to apply in like early May. So that's a benefit to it, but again, that's a very like worst case scenario. If I don't get any acceptances, I'll just apply next year with a stronger application. I will say that again, if that worst case situation were to happen, um, I would love to take a year to actually travel. That was my plan when I first was like, oh, I'll take, you know, a gap year. I didn't, I didn't get to travel really anywhere because it was the pandemic. And I've always really wanted to do like a medical missions trip. Um, among other things that I really won't be able to do once I start medical school. So I will look at the positive sides. It's really just up to God and his plans for me, what my next year will look like. But I have faith that either way, I will be excited about 2023. Moving on, next semester should be a little bit easier because I understand like what I'm getting myself into. I do have one week after my MCAT, like as my spring break before the spring semester starts. And then we go until my graduation in May. Actually, like we finish in April, our finals are in April, but then graduation is May 20th. I may or may not know if I'm accepted into medical school by May 20th. Likely not. Um, I'm not considered for even an interview. I'm not considered for an interview 
until my spring semester grades at Meharry are submitted, which is in April, late April after the finals. So right now my plan is just to compartmentalize, focusing on the MCAT right now, and then focusing on my classes in the spring semester in order to keep that required GPA. Like I said, graduation is May 20th. I am excited about that because I didn't get to, to walk for my last master's degree, and I'll finally be able to experience Meharry like in person, see all my classmates. But yeah, like I mentioned, everything is kind of pushed back for the MHS program. So I may not know at the time of graduation if I'm accepted yet. Um, I could even just be on the wait list with expectations that that might change. Depending on how I'm feeling, I may share that or I may not. So I just ask for you guys to just wait for the announcement. <laughs> just wait until like July. If you don't hear nothing by my birthday, then We'll talk about it then, but like, don't ask me, did you get in? Did you get in? Because I may not know. And I, that will be like a whole different waiting season that I don't really want a lot of like noise because I don't need anybody to try and like waver my faith during that time. So I'm just letting you guys know kind of now on the timeline, don't ask me. <laughs> you'll know when you know, when I know, then you'll know. And if you don't know, that means I don't know, or I'm planning on letting you guys know in a very grandiose way. So just stay patient. They talked about how even if you're on the wait list, that could change up until weeks into the orientation. I'm just preparing for the season mentally and spiritually with the idea that if he's done it before, he can do it again. Okay, you guys, I think that's really a recap of everything. Um, I do want to leave you guys with some kingdom keys because I believe that God speaks to us in various different ways. And if you got to know before you go, God's going to breathe it into somebody else's ear because God wants someone who will find out on the way. You see, I don't know about you, but I've come to a stage in my life where I realize that the only way that I can say yes is if I'm willing to go without knowing. God, I don't know exactly how you're going to use me when I get there, but I packed my bags and I'm on the way. God, I don't know exactly how you're going to save this marriage, but I'm going to go to the therapy anyway. God, I don't know exactly how you're going to save this child, but I'm going to stick beside him anyway. I'm going to go before I know because I trust that as I'm stepping, you're figuring it out. As I'm stepping, you're going ahead of me and making my crooked path straight. I'm going because there's a need waiting for me when I get there. I hear God saying, you don't see the need now because you you haven't moved in the direction of where God is sending you but when you get to where God is calling you the need will be so evident and I want to prophesy this over your life that there is no one else who can fulfill that need but you the moment that you step into that place God is going to reveal why it had to be you who released who released the grace that leads to transformation all right, and we're going to end this episode off right with a few minutes of guided affirmations to keep our spirits up and focused as we move throughout our day, remove all distractions, and verbally repeat these words after me. I am seeing the amazing results of my hard work. I focus on progress, not perfection. I am on the right path for my career and my future. I am capable of achieving all of my goals. on new challenges and love to work hard. I put my heart into everything I do. I have the power to follow my dreams and live my best life.
Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe. You can do so on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcast. If you're not already watching the pod, don't forget there are accompanying video podcasts on my YouTube channel, Beauty and Brain. So join me over there and subscribe to that channel as well. You can follow me on my Instagram and TikTok at Breland Hunt or visit my website, BrelandHunt.com for weekly podcast updates or to contact me to share your story. Until next time, be sure to live each day to the fullest because you only live once and give yourself some grace. We are all just a work in progress. I'll see you guys soon. I don't know when the next podcast episode is going to be, but if you're not following me on YouTube, I will definitely be vlogging more this next semester. So if you want to keep up with everything, definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel and I will see you guys very soon. Bye.